Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Hippotios of Crete. And in that last episode, you will no doubt remember that the Empire had descended into civil war upon the ascension of the new Emperor Basileos II of House Macedon. Now, we are not going to get involved in this civil war as much as possible. We have our own goals to take care of. Chief among them is taking Athens in the, the chaos here. Athens did try to attack our brother Bosporios here in Sicily during the previous episodes. And we are going to try to use this opportunity to get some revenge and take Athens back from the dastardly house scleros so we have our uh, oracle currently fabricating a claim it's going to take two years we'll see how long it takes for this civil war to resolve itself i imagine it probably won't take two years but you know you never know and the chaos after this civil war will probably last longer than that so we can use this as an opportunity to try to get in here I'm kind of hoping that we'll get the claim on the entire duchy, but if we only get the county, that's fine as well. I am not too opposed to either option uh, because our main goal is to get the holy site in Athens. That'll give us two uh, of the three holy sites we need in order to reform our religion. And after that, the, the ones that we're probably going to be looking at to get that third one is going to either be Servia or Alexandria. Uh, I would prefer to get Alexandria because I have a, a vague goal of wanting to create a Hellenic Greek kingdom here in Egypt once more, like the one that exist, existed after the death of Alexander. Uh, Alexander the Great, that is, of course. But we, we shall see. We're going to kind of play things by ear. We are going to need money, so I've raised my forces again. Put our knight Tomislav here in charge, and he's going to head over to the Rust Rustamids in order to get us a little bit more money so that we can essentially pay for the claim we're going to get here, some development, and also some events to reduce our stress because... We're at a really high stress level right now, and I think if we go up another one, we have a risk of like having a heart attack and just dying. So we're gonna try to avoid that. So uh, probably the next thing that we're gonna spend money on is going to be a feast so that we can reduce that stress. That's gonna require a lot of money, but we can get money by doing these raids. So that's gonna be our saving grace essentially. We do have an event here, hopefully, okay, there's an option that'll lower our stress, so hopefully this makes sense to choose. In the flanks of my throne room, I can hear the master of the hunt, Komitas, engaged in an intense negotiation with Akakios over the sale of a beautiful peregrine falcon, a highly prestigious bird for anyone to own. Komitas seems to be stuck on haggling the price, with the falconer refusing to budge, and from the frustration in both their voices, they've been at this a while. Perhaps they'd appreciate their despot's opinion almost as much as I'd appreciate a new bird. Akakios, you are asking too much. Come now, I'll make you a better offer. Oh, we'd lose eight stress. We'd gain this hunting raptor here, which would be good. Just keep it out of my throne room. Hmm. Uh, do Eight stress. Reducing eight stress is not worth it. Uh, that much money to us right now. So we're just going to try to intercede on the behalf of uh, Komitas here. So let's see if we can get him to give a better deal. We did not. We failed to negotiate a better deal here for our vassal. That's unfortunate, but we didn't take a stress loss or anything like that. What is this? My wife, Despotisa Rikiza, eagerly brings a woman before me. My despot, allow me to introduce you to Madalina, claimant to the county of Venecin. Madalina bows before me and says, It is an honor 
Uh, sadly, Venison is most likely to remain outside my grasp without a beneficiary on my side. Duke of Sancho of Provence. Duke Sancho of Provence. Hmm, Venetian? That's pretty far away. I don't think we have much interest in Italy, but let's see. I might just be able to help you with that. Good luck. Yeah, sorry. Good luck with that. I don't think there's, we have any chance of uh, essentially helping her out with this, and we don't really have any interest in this particular part of Italy right now, or going up against the current king of Italy. Not at the moment, anyways. So I think we're just gonna say good luck with that because I don't want to deal with that situation right now. So our army is going uh, going across there to get our money. It is our money. The R Rustamids are just holding onto it for us <laughs> at the moment. What do we have here? We can hold court, pay homage, or petition liege. Well, we're not going to petition our liege because I suspect he probably won't be our liege for much longer here. We could petition him, though. Uh, but we're going to have to sail all the way over there. You know what? But we might be able to get a deal from him. I'm curious if we can if we can head here, get a deal from the Basileos, and then just... Essentially, he's gonna lose and then we'll we'll get a deal with the next Basileus. Let's see what kind of petitions we could ask for. Council appointment? That's not really, really what I want. What I want is for him to resettle some subjects. That would be ideal. Uh, we, luckily, we can do this very cheaply. The, there's zero danger for us to sail over here. We could gain 200 lives. Yeah, no, we're not gonna bother with that. We're just going to start traveling. We'll head there and we will hopefully get ourselves some, some extra subjects here in Heraklion because that would be, that would be helpful. That'll give us a little bit of extra money and things like that. So let's see here. Arrange a marriage. Ah, our young sister here, Ariadne is... Her betrothed, Ale uh, Alayos, is old enough for them to be wed, so we are going to get that uh, alliance with Hungary here. Now, I was looking around. We do have our young daughter here, Princess Alexandra, and we do want to get a potential marriage alliance here. And I was looking around, and I saw this excellent opportunity with Miroslav over here. Now, he is pretty good because he has a claim, or he's actually going to inherit the Duchy of Zmulja. Am I, maybe I'm pronoun I'm not actually pronounce that right. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, no, Zahum, Zahumia, Zahumia. He's actually going to inherit that. And his mother, because she's of a different dynasty than him, she doesn't mind if he takes a matrilineal marriage. So this is actually a big opportunity here because this is actually a reasonably powerful duchy here. They've got quite a bit of land. It provides tons of raiding opportunities if we do cap or take it uh, later on. And it's actually not a terrible alliance. They have some money. They're on the coast, so they can actually get to places where we're looking to go. And... Overall, I mean, she's pregnant. That, that doesn't matter because it's our eldest son who's inheriting. So this is actually an extremely good opportunity here, especially if we do end up playing as Princess Alexandra, which we might. Uh, so let's uh, let's get that matrilineal marriage. Uh, yeah, this is an this is a huge opportunity. You don't really get opportunities like this very often at all. So we are going to definitely do that uh you will notice that we have gotten ourselves a concubine uh this was a character that was in our court already and i think that this is uh the sister of the son of our uh, warrior here eric bjornsson 
his he brought his family here when he came to his court and one of those family members was his i guess uh stepdaughter i believe uh gloat or gloat and she is she's got some uh, not really great traits callous humble uh fickle she's a mastermind philosopher and she is hail so the hail trait's gonna be pretty pretty good there actually um she's not really into men but she didn't really <laughs> uh you know have a lot of choice when we decided to take her as our woman i don't think she well, hopefully doesn't mind too much uh she was just a member of our court and it is essentially you know a position that will gain her not really prestige but at least a place of security in the court so maybe she didn't mind uh quite as much Hopefully she'll be able to bear us some children because I suspect in a situation like this, and this was unfortunately the case, I believe, in a lot of the kind of olden, olden times, as some might say, uh, that if our, if we weren't having children with our wife here, we would probably blame it on her and say that, you know, she's not able to bear us children. Despite the fact that we probably know that it's actually Alexandros and his extreme stress levels that are preventing him from uh, effectively having children, so to speak. So it would probably still get blamed on our wife. But, you know, that's, uh, that's why we've gotten ourselves a, a concubine here who will hopefully help us with that issue. I don't think it will because... Uh, as some people have pointed out, the fact that we have an incredibly high stress level is reducing our fertility. But uh, we'll see. We may we may get a son out of our concubine or still our wife. But that remains to be seen. I wouldn't mind playing as Alexandra, honestly. If we have some more daughters and we end up playing, playing as Alexandra here, I'm fine with that. She's getting the stewardship education. She's now potentially going to have uh, her children inherit the duchy of Zhumje. 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 <laughs> Somebody, if I'm pronouncing this anywhere near correctly, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure somebody has some idea there. But in any case, uh, we are escorted to Basileus, Basileus's throne room, where he beckons me to approach and address him. I carefully explain the disparate situations in the county of Heraklion and Byzantion, and what could be done to redress the balance. After listening to his the speech, he smiles warmly at me and states, absolutely vassal. I shall dispatch my agents to kick it, take care of this matter. Excellent, excellent, look at this. So we gain two extra development here in Heraklion. We gain the uh, settlement influx, which is going to reduce our development growth and our popular opinion. I'm okay with that. But we gain some court grandeur, and some renown, and that plus two development is actually probably going to be uh, quite helpful, I can imagine. Let's take a look at the development around here. We're gonna set time running once more. There we go, development. So we're at eight development there now, nine in Hanya. So not terrible, I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible compared to essentially the rest of the land here you know if we can get it up to 10 or something like that i think that would be pretty nice but uh really what i would like to do well number one what i would like to do is pick a perk courtship promising prospects oh that would be you know that would be nice but i think i think we're gonna go with never back down here uh, that's a good one because friendly fatal casualties is nice to have an advantage plus five. That's pretty good as well. We're going to need that during our main fights. And yeah, we shall see. Um, we are returning once more. Oh yeah. So as I was saying, what I would really like to do is form that kingdom here because look here in Egypt and Although I think it would make sense to potentially have a kingdom in Egypt centered around Alexandria, which is a pretty decent place. I mean, if if we could get Cairo and Giza, 
I, I suspect that we might end up making that our capital and keep Alexandria just... We'd probably keep these three counties would be the core of our territory, but Cairo is kind of obviously the capital of this region. Now Alexandria has faded a little bit in its glory since the time of Alexander. Uh, these, these territories are just so good. If we click on economy here, you'll see that there are so many different special buildings to make here. So we've got the, the Pyramids of Giza, which are an excellent one. We could get the Al-Azhar University, which would be amazing to, to get. And then in Alexandria, we could build that Grand Cathedral on the holy site. We can also build a uh, Carth. This is actually not a terrible territory to hold either, because we can in Carthage we can build a grand cathedral as well, which would be nice, and we can build a university here in Cortana. So you know we could build a North African kingdom centered around Carthage as well. I mean, those two might split between our children at some point. So if we have an Egyptian kingdom here and a Carthaginian kingdom as well, you know, who knows uh, which one will end up being the one that we end up going with and developing. We shall see. Uh, these are just plans for far in the future. Gift artifact. Oh, our good friend here. Ecumenical Patriarch Poforios. Wow. Good. Oh, and it's on his deathbed. Wow, this is like him, you know, he's bequeathing us this treasured artifacts of him. A wild lynx hide, a masterwork small wall ornament, prestige plus 0 0.08, court grandeur bonus. Oh, wow. Our good friend. Oh my gosh, we're going to lose a friend. We're going to take another stress hit. Oh god. Uh, we will accept a uh, good friend, but... This is this is not good. Uh, we're gonna take another stress hit, I think, when our friend <laughs> passes away here. That is not good indeed. Looks all right. Well, we're gonna put his gift up here in our court. I think what I would like to do maybe is put one lynx hide up there, and then we'll switch our uh, cursed fox hide ornament over here. So we're getting a lot of prestige per month. We don't have to worry about prestige. We just have to worry about having a freaking heart attack here. Let's bring in our money and then we will... Then we will hopefully hold this feast so we can reduce a little bit of stress. Honestly, I am extremely worried that Hippotios is not going to last long. So we're going to bring in that money. What do we got here? Activity available. Uh, yeah, it says we can host the Grand Tournament. Mm, not yet. What I would really like to do is just bring back enough money so that we can... So that we can host that... So that we can host that feast. Reduce a little bit of stress, because there's not that many other ways to reduce stress. We don't have a lot of options. Rituals are an important part of daily life in any royal court. They may be boring for some, but we must perform them regularly to emphasize my court's power and status. Why then did Zoe slip up today? Who is this? Zoe, the wife of our Heteria Kiros. It was just a run-of-the-mill ceremony for when I entered the courtroom in the morning and everyone present had their part to play. Certain gestures to make, certain body postures to assume, certain form formulaic words to say, and so on. Yet she blundered, causing the entire ceremony to come to a screeching halt, even though she had done this so many times before. As I pass by Zoe, everyone gazes at the unfortunate woman who has an embarrassed look on her face. Uh, she is Orthodox Greek, so she comes from, from mainland Greece, so she might not really necessarily know what she's doing. Regardless of my personal feelings, it does not reflect well on me as a despot if even one member of my court cannot perform their basic duties. It's not a big deal mis at all. Mistakes happen all the time. Oh, we can't take this stress. Privately chastise her. I think that's probably what we're gonna we're gonna do. We are humble. That's the important thing to remember is that we are a humble character. So I think even though you know we're not gonna chastise her in front of everyone, 
but I think we're going to go to her. And very humbly, we're going to explain what she did wrong and how to correct it in the next time. And just tell her that, you know, next time you have to do better because we can't really have mistakes like this. But we're not going to we're not going to bring it out in front of everybody. No, I think we'll just do that in private. We are a, we are really we're not a, a bad person here. You know, we are we are a warrior, obviously. But our character is a pretty decent guy. I think this humble trait does a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to determining our character's personality. You know, there's a lot of traits like callous or selfish or things like that, where you can get a sense that this character is a very, like, narcissistic character or, you know, they've got that kind of sociopathic kind of bent to them. But I think if a character is humble, that necessitates a certain level you know it's humility is a is a trait that i think lends itself towards somebody that we would consider like a good person or a decent person if you combine that with Gre gregarious so he's like outgoing and diligent which is somebody who you know works hard and and has a you know a lot of a uh, sense of duty and responsibility i think that leads to me thinking that hippodios is like generally a decent person and then you know he's kind of melancholic and stuff as well so i think hippotius is is generally a good person and so we'll probably be mostly choosing options that kind of go along with that while the ratings going on uh, as some of you pointed out so in the last episode our drunken younger brother here did steal the prize ring from us. And some of you said, you know, I think everybody agreed that this isn't, you know, something that we would go to war over or anything like that. You know, we we're friends with our younger brother. We really care about him a lot. And, you know, he, he stole this ring. It's probably more of a game between us. And I think I think you guys were right about that, that we would probably see this as something more humorous than anything. You know, there's maybe a little bit of that brotherly rivalry here. But uh, we have uh, launched a scheme to steal that back from our brother. Funnily enough, he has now a very secure chest. So he probably got this ring and then got this very secure chest exactly so we wouldn't steal it back. So I imagine this might become something of like a game between us would be stealing this prize ring back and forth and seeing just like who can who can hold on to it for for longer. So, yeah, I think that, you know, us and our younger brother's relationship is not going to be like too bothered by this, really. So uh, that is that's how I see it anyways. And I think most of you guys agreed that that would probably be the case here as well. We do have some prisoners. Can we get some ransoms? I would like to, I'd like to get some ransoms. Princess, ooh, there's a, we, we captured a princess. Very good. Well, hopefully this princess will get us some money. There we go, 16. Awesome, that's what we want to see. And, oh, and we're swaying our concubine. Excellent. I would like to continue to sway our concubine in order to get her to like us a little bit more. If I could convert her to demand conversion. Oh, she will accept. Yeah, if we can get her to Hellenism, that's going to be helpful. She's currently Norse uh, and a Satru, so, but now she's uh, Hellenic, so that gives her a little, even further boost of opinion, so... Despite the fact that she is not attracted to men, she still likes us. And like I said, this is probably because we're an outgoing guy, you know, humble, diligent. We're a good person. You know, we probably treat her pretty well. So she might not really be attracted to us, but I think the security from being our concubine in, in a world like this is probably worth a lot to somebody so she might not be attracted to us but i think she still doesn't mind our presence she doesn't dislike us as a person or or anything like that and she went into this uh concubinage concubinage is that how you say it uh willingly so 
Today, I am observing Mayor Sabas as he trains some of his new levies, but the recruits under his command resemble a disorganized mob more than an army. I look on as he struggles to gain control of the situation, clearly pushed to his limits. While it's never easy to train new soldiers, he seriously needs to do better than this. Oh, we just, we cannot keep taking the, we can't keep, we can't take any more stress hits. Chastise him for his failure. Cheer him up after the training's over. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's cheer him up. You know, well, we're, we're trying to be humble here and just feeling like, you know, you can do better. We, you know, just keep at it. You'll learn. And hopefully, you know, that will, uh, you'll, you'll end up becoming a better commander in the future. You know, we're just trying to be humble about it. There we go, making this money. I think once the forces get back here, we're probably gonna siege down here and here and maybe here. We'll be full up on our money and then we'll be able to head back and host that feast. With any luck, because we are gregarious, we will lose enough stress in that feast to survive. That's, that's my only hope is that we lose enough stress to survive because if we get a bad event here we could be we could be screwed civil war is still going on how about our uh yeah okay so we're about halfway done here civil war looks like it's still going on for now so not really too concerned about that i don't really want to hold court just yet because i don't want to risk a bunch of bad events in a row here where we could potentially, you know, lose our, lose our stress or gain more stress, I, I should say, um, during that. So I'm gonna hold off on holding court for now, just cause we're too stressed out about it. You know, we, we're avoiding court because we're stressed. We're melancholic, we're stressed. We're just like, you know what? We don't wanna deal with people right now. I think that seems pretty fair, so. I mean, we're gonna be hosting a feast, so I guess it's different though, you know? Hosting a feast is fun. Holding court is tedious and, you know, whatnot. And despite the fact that we're diligent, you can be a diligent person. And, you know, if you're melancholic, if you're feeling a little bit depressed, even if you're diligent, you just have some of those times where you just don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna work. Oh, look at this. Yeah, uh, the young emperor here is a drunkard. 17 years old, already a drunkard. Kids these days, you know? It's it's the 900s. Ugh. You know, back in the 800, things were different. Let me tell you straight. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we're gonna speed up time a little bit here so we can get our money. There we go. So we're actually all full up and we can now return to Cartagena and bring back our money that's going to give us lots we're going to definitely be able to host our host our feast oh man look how close we are my god we cannot we absolutely cannot take any more stress at all <laughs> there is there's no leeway here you guys um i'm going to take organized march because that's going to get our army back here <laughs> slightly faster and the faster our army gets back here, the faster we get our money, the faster we get our money, the quicker we can host our feast. Ooh, every time I see somebody die, I'm just like, oh my God, this cannot, this isn't good. Oh good, look, Gloat is, uh, she likes us a little bit better, good. <laughs> I'm terrified right now. This is like so risky right now. We are so close and I'm like, I'm, I don't know. I've just got this like bad feeling. If we take another stress hit, that we are going to die of a heart attack. I don't even know if hosting a feast is gonna bring us down <laughs> that much. We're at 290 out of 300. We can only take 10 more stress. Come on, bring back. There we go. All right, so we bring back that money. Let's disband our. Do we need to disband our rainers? Now we're probably gonna need more money, so I, I imagine we're probably gonna go and raid somebody else, like Ali here. Yeah, we're probably gonna go and raid you. 
but we need to host this feast. Oh, we could go to Nazir, Nazir Am Amar's Grand Tournament. Oh, a wrestling contest. Could we lose? No, we may not arrive to it in time. It's too far away. Let's host a feast. All right, we've got lots of money. A murder feast? No, not a murder feast. We do not need a Red Wedding-esque thing going on here. We're going to host it in uh, Heraclio, because I think that just makes the most sense. Uh, our intent is going to be looking for stressful leaving opportunities, obviously. Honorary guest. Who is going to be our honorary guest? The Emperor? Hmm. He's not going to be the Emperor for long, honestly. The new ecumenical patriarch? No, I don't think we would make the ecumenical patriarch our honored guest. Who could it be? What about our brother? Could we make our brother the the honored guest? Was he even gonna was he even gonna come? Prince Timotheos? Oh, I wonder if hmm. Let's see. I wonder if we can get there we go, that's gonna increase increase prestige gain. No, we're not really we don't really care too much about prestige. Number of courses, great opinion gain, and eh, no, I don't think we're gonna worry about that either. So it looks like our brother isn't going to come to the feast. It it doesn't appear, so perhaps we can get I mean Prince Timotheos. He is I'm not a Pose. I'm not opposed to him here. We've got our friend as well. Oh, you know what? Ow. Oh, she's not going to make it here. We'll decline the invitation. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I was going to say we could make our sister, Queen Pelagia. Uh, but... You know what? Let's make our wife. Let's make our wife the honored guest here. Oh, will they not accept? Oh, but will she come? There we go. Okay, you know what? Our sister here, the Queen of Moldavia. I think that that makes sense to, you know, uh, invite our sister to come back home to Heraclio. She is a queen. Like, that's a prestigious position. So I think making our sister the queen here as the honored guest, I think that makes a lot of sense. So there we go. So that's good. You know, bringing our sister back. You guys know that we care about our family. We care about our sisters, our brother, and the they're important to us. So I think inviting her to come back here, come back home for, for a time to en enjoy this feast is going to be uh, a, a nice way of honoring our sisters. So we're going to start that feast. Luckily, we don't have to spend all of our money, which is which is good to which is good to have here. So. What a lovely time ahead of us here. Hopefully, we will gain some good stress-relieving opportunities here. We shall see. Our dear sister is on her way. Every event, I'm just like, ugh, ugh what's going to happen here? Uh, the Mad King's Fortress. There's an abandoned fortress in Hanya that was built by a Mad King, according to local legend. He was said to be an unpredictable, erratic man of irredeemable and unmeasurable cruelties. Th though the fortifications are no longer as good as they used to be, my soldiers still find it useful as an outpost at least. There are rumors that the spirit of the king and his soldiers can be seen walking around the dilapidated ramparts, even in broad daylight. While some consider this an ill omen, others note that such stories easily frighten any foreign enemies as well. So we gain Haunted Abandoned Fortress, which is fort level plus one, hostile raid time plus 5%, and a little bit less control growth, so. There we go. Activity log, what's going on? We welcome the guests. Yeah, recreation. Just give, give me some opportunities to relieve my stress. Okay. How much is this going to cost? 182. All right, we're going to need to do some more raiding here, obviously. I've prowled through documents, both ancient and of less certain provenance. I finally have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of the county of Attica. Seeing as Thedorios unfortunately insists on being orthodox, I could even argue that you have a claim to the Duchy of Athens by divine right. I don't know if the other orthodox rulers will accept that, but 
you know, perhaps we can trace our lineage back. And as I mentioned uh, in the previous season with Alexandros, I do believe that somebody in this position of becoming a despot here, despite the fact that he was a peasant leader, we would have our historians, in quotation marks, trace our lineage back to perhaps the previous ruler of Crete, and now to, you know, tying those connections and essentially saying like, yeah, we aren't, we, we may have been a peasant, but we come from a lineage of rulers and blah, 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 things like that. You know how it is. Uh, that's what Basil the first did. So, you know, if he can do it, why can't we? We're going to take the claim on the Duchy of Athens, uh, even though that's going to put us severely into debt here. Uh, we can we can fix that by sending out our raiders over here to the lands of Ali. Ooh, we're going to take some attrition. I don't know. Oh, that's so much attrition. We can only go really go down the coast. Is there anybody we can raid? I can't really risk raiding anybody else. What's our best bet is probably to travel. How much do the Wahhabids have? Not enough to go up against us. They might though if we if we lose a lot of guys to attrition. I think we're gonna head over to here. And then we are going to move down here. We need the money. We don't got a lot of options, guys. We we need to we need to pay back the the big debt that we went into there, so we'll We'll just have to probably suffer some attrition here. Our liege lost their war with Duke Callistos. Uh, okay. So who... Where's the emperor right now? Oh, he doesn't... But he doesn't hold Byzantium. Well, now, the current emperor, Basileus Akakios, does not hold Byzantium because Prince Basileus II... So he didn't take Byzantium or Thrace itself. So he's ruling from this kind of the boonies out here in Melitene. Interesting. So he's going to want to take that, though. He's going to want to take that uh, territory there. Very curious indeed. But he's, uh, he's over here in our feast, so... All right. So interesting opportunities are presenting themselves here. Our wife is pregnant. Oh, that's nice. Ah, I kind of hope that... I hope she has a daughter, because I kind of want to play as Princess Alexandra here, but we'll see. Maybe she'll have a son who will have some good traits, and then we'll be fine with uh, that as well. But good to know that our wife... Our wife is pregnant. Oh, we get another dynasty legacy. All right. Uh, we're not going to continue up here to generational belligerence. We got the House of Warriors, but I think what makes the most sense here is going to probably be kin. I'd like to take what, you know, I, traditionally in this game, I think typically you just kind of like move up one tree without spreading yourself too, too thin, really. Increased chance to generate a strong hook on lieges who like you at grand weddings. Dang. A strong hook? Getting a strong hook on your liege is crazy. This could be really good. Activities. Kin. Kin, kin, kin. You know, we're going to take one from kin, and then we might take another one. We might take this one from activities. But I have, you know, we're taking the role play option here. And I think it makes the most sense to take one uh, in the kin tree because of how important our family is to us. I think it only makes sense that we would choose that option. So here we go. The guests are gathered in the great hall, lords and ladies from near and far. The mood is bright and the festivities begin. All right, so let's... Oh, we gained a favor hook on Rosa Del Young. All right. My lord, the wine cracked. We opened the next barrel. It has all gone bad. Oh, we cannot. <laughs> we don't have the money. We all have to pitch in. We can spend. We have prestige to spend. Oh, and we'll gain a little bit of money. Oh, thank God. 
The great table seating the upper nobility on the dais gives a, gave a loud crack, and a moment later it gave in under the weight of the food and gilded decoration. As my most distinguished guest and I had to be fitted in among the lower nobility, ended up close to my acquaintance, Theo Cariste. Duke Mateos took it poorly, however, and told everyone it was a grave injustice to be seated with lords and ladies barely better than commoners. Acting quite the opposite, Prince Basileos displayed grace and humility among his lessers. Theo Carista and I ended up talking all evening and agreed it should not be the last time we feasted in each other's company. What a great night. Oh my god. Theo Carista has become our friend. This is not a good... I don't want her to be my friend because she's old and she's going to die and we're going to take another stress hit. Stop making friends with people, Alexandra. Oh, thankfully we get an event here. Minus 55 stress. Oh, that is so... We, we had just have to take this option. We need to reduce the stress. Is there anything more jovial than a good feast? Guests throng to and fro, eating and chatting while flickering torchlight plays off every wall, light bouncing like laughter around the hall. Coordinating so many people and servants is an underappreciated task, one with no small degree of subtle difficulty to it, and it's pleasing to see it done well. Sometimes it's nice to simply sit back and enjoy the little things in life. We're just, I'm not even looking at the other options. It, it makes sense for our character anyways, but we can we have no other choice here, you guys. We must. We have to do this. <laughs> As my guests leave, they seem to depart in good spirits. I'm also relieved that Captain Marco does not depart without saying farewell. What a man, we say, about Captain Marco of the Brothers of Bayan. Uh, <laughs> so, there we go. <laughs> And as one plate of food is replaced by the next, my sister Persephone goes on and on about lawmaking. And that was how we salvaged that mess. Are you sure I am not boring you, my lord? My lord? Oh, why don't we talk about you instead, my dear sister? Indeed, why don't we talk about you <laughs> instead? The feast is starting to draw to a close, and my visitors are surely expecting me to lavish a little attention on Queen Pelagia, our esteemed guest of honor. Traditionally, a complimentary toast and a deep drink of wine does the trick. Then again, Pelagia, all Pelagia did was turn up. The feast was my idea. No, no, no. Uh, and now a toast to Queen Pelagia. There we go. So we lose a little bit of stress. Mental break growing needs. Why are we taking a mental break here? Uh, I don't really... Oh, do we become a drunkard or we know we can't spend this money? A stiff drink. Oh, I don't want to become a drunkard. Ugh, everybody in our family is turning to the drink. I hate this. We can gain 38 stress. A stiff drink. I don't know if this makes... Uh, I don't know if a diligent person would really like turn to the drink like this but we are gregarious uh a stiff drink solves most problems what does this drunkard trait give us tiny health penalty stress loss plus 20 percent uh, you know i don't think i don't think we would become i don't think we would become a drunkard even though most of our family here is is turning to the drink you know our sisters and and whatnot I don't necessarily know if we would. I think the diligent trait kind of wins out over the idea of like drinking too much. So we're going to take, we're going to go up a little bit of stress, but then we go back down here. So few candles survive after the last of the guests have left. I can hear a pair of servants letting on signs of relief after the doors close. I've worked in the hospitality industry. I imagine once this feast was done, you would be pretty happy that this uh, this is all over and done with if you were one of these servants. The food is still warm on the ceramic plates. Soon word will reach every corner of the realm and every noble worth their salt will know that my magnificence is unparalleled. With all my guests leaving my castle and the entire contents of my vast pantry in their belly, I am proud to say that the feast was a success. Nevertheless, I am still grateful that the endeavor is over for now. And with that, it's all done. So we lose some more stress. We gain the eager reveler trait. We gain a bunch of nice little bonuses there. And now we can finish that feast. So we've gone down a significant amount of stress. And that's good because, yeah, we've we've got a little bit of leeway now. And I am I am happy for that. Oh, we might have a little bit of uh, a little bit of a rebellion building up here. Hmm, interesting. 
not gonna be not not gonna be too much to to deal with there, but all right, we're gonna can we even make enough money? We could make enough money to make it worth a raiding into these lands if we can take this and this and this. It might be worth it. We'll see how much attrition we we take here with our army. Our counselor Kaiserios has died, so we need a new chancellor. Who is going to do the job? Let's see. Focus or hmm. We might reassign Alejandro. He is good as our steward. And he's making us some money, but Mayor Sabas there is actually pretty good, so and he's he's a decent uh chancellor there, so we'll go with the uh, Mayor Sabas. We'll put him in that position there oh we do want to switch our uh we want to switch you to now 86 years to convert carthage well that's gonna take a long time but oh you know what that is we're never gonna be able to convert it uh so we're just gonna go back to religious relations it's because it is of a different culture we would have to change it to greek if we wanted to get it in anywhere the amount of time we were we were looking for. Can we promote culture? How long is this going to take? Six years. Oh, we can turn this to Greek in six years? That's not that bad. Uh, Yeah, all right. I bet you once he is done converting this to, to Greek, this converting it to uh, Hellenic will probably go down to like 20 years or something like that. Just because of the bonuses from our religion. Oh, we're going to take a hundred more. Yeah, okay, let's go here. We're going to take some more attrition, but... Oh, we have an event. What's in a name? Despotisa Rikiza has a baby cradled in her arm. Hey, there we go. We do have a daughter. Uh, she didn't get any good traits, so... She wants to name her after you? Ah, you know what? I'm fine with that. A lovely idea. Rikiza it is. There we go. We'll let our let our young daughter here be named. So yeah, still Alexandra is still our heir. Oh, but Glode is pregnant now too. She does like us. Uh, we don't actually need to continue to swear because she she likes us plenty already. So that's fine. Steel Artifact, the Antiquarian. One of the obvious hurdles to retrieving the artifact is Despot Bosporius' Antiquarian, Belisarius. There are, of course, multiple ways to deal with that person, but I wonder if he is the type whom I could persuade to look the other way, offering a pseudo-borrow. We don't have the money for bribes. Perhaps an artifact for an artifact? He'll become the owner of Magnificent. Hmm. Let's see. An introduction to Alexandra might prove stimulating. What? Uh, to uh, okay. I thought this was gonna be to our daughter. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I don't really like that. I don't really like that option. <laughs> um, does it? And I don't know if that makes sense for the character, really. Uh, yeah, and with like the with this low chances here, um, I don't think that makes a lot of sense here. I'll look into other possibilities instead, yeah. I don't really think that option made a lot of sense for for our character. Maybe if we were like devious and things like that, but not really like a humble, diligent kind of person. I don't think that makes makes a ton of sense here. Oh good, we we captured some some people. Can we get some ransoms for them? Hopefully. Let's let us hope. We've got some money here, 42. Yeah, all right, let's 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 go in here. And we gain, uh, we just gained a weak hook. That's, that's not gonna, that's not money. We need money hooks. That's what we need. But in any case, we're gonna get our, there we go, we can get that. Can we, can we ransom you? Let's see, ransom you for some money? It's, he's close to accepting. She's dear to him, but he's greedy. He'll probably he probably won't accept them. We'll keep her in our dungeon for now. Can we can we get back here without losing without losing a ton of attrition here? 
We'll see. Can gain another martial perk, hit and run. All right, let's take hit and run. Continue down that strategist tree. Then we'll return. We'll return back here. There we go. We won't lose as many troops to attrition. What's going on here? My dear brother, I... Oh, there's a War of Tyranny. It looks like uh, Kemaladin and uh, Duke Trifon are going up against our brother in a War of Tyranny. All right, brother, we'll assist you in putting down this... This rebellion, if we can, we got to bring our troops back anyways. They don't have a ton. Oh, he's going to be fine anyways. We're obviously going to help our brother. We want him to retain strict control on power. Oh, but they got... Oh, here's the Salamid army, actually. All right, so they're a little bit more powerful than we might have... Hey, look, another daughter. Things are just looking, you know... The game is just saying you're going to be playing a female character in the next generation which I'm totally okay with here. So we have Princess Anna. Um, Margarita. <laughs> That's a, you know, I'm sure it had a different meaning back then, but Barbara, Martha, good Greek name. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Hest I think we had some suggestions for like Hestia and stuff like that. I think that naming her directly after a goddess would be a little bit sacrilegious, so to speak, but Hestiana? That sounds like a, a name I could picture a character having. So may you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter, Princess Estiana. There we go. You know what? I think the dynasty is mostly secure here, so I'm, I'm fine if we don't have any more children after this point. We probably will. Our wife is still pretty young, and we do have, you know, our concubine's still pretty young too. I wouldn't be surprised if we gain, get another one. Oh, we're getting, us, getting ourselves a little bit of a... Uh, a revolt here as well. Never a peasant's lot is to serve their lord. Let's rally the troops here. Yeah, all right. Oh, it's the... It is... Oh, okay, we've got a couple small little armies here coming up against this. And we've been invited to Filaretos' feast. Participants may lose stress. We have to do this. <laughs> We're going to have to join the feast here. We... We can't afford it, but we should be okay once we return with our once we return with our money here that we've got 55 that's gonna it's gonna help anyways so we'll go in we'll drop off our money and hey we stole the artifact i feel a strong sense of accomplishment as i'm presented with the artifact i've tried to reclaim the prize ring has returned to its rightful owner Though slightly scuffed and dirty from my rescue, I admire it once again eh, with a knowing smile that my efforts have borne fruit. So her brother, uh, you know what? You're going to have to steal it back from us uh, after that. He's a little he's a little annoyed, but, you know, so so be it, brother. Oh, and look at that. Our wife is pregnant once more. Derelict ship. The sea is calm and forgiving. Oh, let's get uh, please give us money from this. 57% chance that we get some money. Let's try it. We find nothing. Damn. <laughs> I would. I was really hoping we would get... We have two big problems. Stress and money. And both of those are... Both of those are something that we are going to need to deal with. So we've got our prize ring back. There we go. Let's equip it. Nice little... Nice little bonuses there indeed. And we've got our money back. So we're going to disband our raiders and we are going to we're going to raise them up so they've got a small army here i'm gonna probably raise up our forces here in hanya so let's raise all of our forces here and then we'll go up against these rebels here once our troops have returned then we're gonna go and help our help out our brother, which I think we should be able to manage. I suspect that we'll be able to handle both of these wars relatively easily. Look at that, we're almost back in the green. Uh, we, we do have this feast where we're playing the politics game, you know? We don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of choice here. The servants run across the hall bringing the final decorations. Some of the guests are yet to arrive, so. You know what, we're 
We're gonna just... Oh, we've only got 600 troops. But, you know, Tomislav... You know, Tomislav can probably handle it here. You know, although I might want to put, uh, let's see, Trifon in charge because he's going to reduce the amount of casualties to our troops. Cannot wait to talk to everyone. I imagine that we, you know, might have been preparing to leave for this feast and then the rebellion kind of sprung up around us. So we might not have even have received word yet that the that this rebellion is happening. Oh, s minus 65 stress. This is where I want to be. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, sometimes we got to make decisions for the sake of our character not dying of a heart attack. So, you know what? We're going to go in and... Oh, it's a subject that fascinates us as well, Kirillos here. Yes, we will. We enjoy speaking with you, indeed. My liege, I have a gift... The rumors have been circulating that Konstantinos wants to curry favor with uh, Basileus Akakios. My dearest liege, it is so lovely to see you knowing that we'd meet here. I brought you this marvelous pelt as a token of my appreciation. Basileus Akakios grins as he studies the animal hide. Seeing how happy he is from receiving the gifts, I realize I'm at risk of missing the opportunity to improve my standing with him as well. Ahem, I declare a toast to the Basileus. Hmm. <laughs> Spill your drink on it, my liege. I have a gift for you as well. What would we? What would we even give him? Ah, uh, he will become the owner of the leather knapsack that we have. Just a bit of a junk item. Yeah, you know what? Let's give him our leather knapsack. See if he likes it. Let us see. A loud crash resounds through the hall as one of the doors to the service quarters break. In a barely clothed tumbles, my caravan leader Pyros and my acquaintance Duchess Demetra. Spill out on the floor in front of everyone. To imagine they had such a secret. Oh, wow, she's been... She was having a little fun there, wasn't she? Here, here, says Basileus. Uh, or we say in... Uh, uh, after the Emperor's long-winded speech. There we go. <laughs> and look at that. Trifon easily defeated the enemy before we even returned back home. Enforced those demands. We're going to imprison this leader here there we go and that is good news oh and look at this our regent rikiza she got us some money by furthering our mandate all right things are slowly turning back in our favor and it's time to return home now we shall depart daylight pours through the windows and we enjoyed ourselves here what a pleasure it was to have you says count filaritos what a feast. Before coming, my clothes were slack and ill-fitting. Now I stagger out twice as full of food and merriment as when I arrived. So we lose some more stress there. And we finish the feast. We're going to return home. We're going to get in charge of our armies. We're going to go and join our brother here in Sicily to prevent him from losing this civil war. But that is all going to happen in the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching.